So you got yourself a Gundam model kit. Nice. And you built it too. Awesome. Now all that's left is that one point step to finish it off. It's time for a little bit of panel lining. All you have to do is reach for those Gundam panel lining markers and... What? You don't have any panel lining markers? Well, in that case, you might have something lying around that you could use. But... What if you ruined it? You know what? Leave this one to me. I've got a whole bunch of plastic that I saved up, a whole bunch of crap I found around the house. Now let's play a little bit of... Can it panel line? Here we go. This video was brought to you by Manscaped.com. What did Santa Claus get you for Christmas? Because he got me the new performance package by Manscaped. The world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit that has you covered from head to toe. Including the Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof cordless trimmer with built-in skin-safe technology and an LED light so you can see those hard-to-see places. Make sure your balls are kept fresh in 2022 with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. New to the collection is the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. With the same skin-safe technology as the trimmer, this won't be shredding your nose to bits with its 360-degree rotary blades. For a limited time, you'll also be getting two free gifts, which is the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Make sure you're entering 2022 in proper Manscaped style by going to manscaped.com and using my promo code MECHA to get 20% off, plus free international shipping and two free gifts. So before we try some of the random household items, I'm going to start off with what I'm using as a benchmark. These are my favorite things to panel line with. These are the Gundam Marker Pore Type Markers for Gunpla. These are specifically designed for using with plastic and they're broken up into a panel liner and a panel liner eraser. The great thing about these is they're quick, clean and don't require any skill whatsoever. All you do is make sure the ink is flowing by pumping, pumping. And then it's as simple as just touching the panel lines. This, yeah, is automatic. So you don't even have to be all that precise with these because there is a second step involved. So just get as much of the lines done as possible. These are easy to get into hard to reach places and this is very, very, very quick. Because step two involves a panel line eraser. So you can use this in a multitude of ways, but my favorite is to just pump out a little bit of this liquid. You can also use a multitude of other things if you prefer. I also like using isopropyl alcohol, that works as well, but the smell is annoying. This pen does not smell. Grab yourself a couple of cotton swabs, get some of that erase mint juice, and then erase away. Don't rub too long, don't spend too long around the actual lines themselves, and just try to clean it up as so. This is super, super simple. This ink actually dries into all the crevices that you want, leaving the most pristine, perfect, and very obvious panel lines. I've tried nothing better as of right now. But there's another alternative. So the second benchmark I'm going to be using are these. These are the fine liner style Gundam markers for panel lining. Once again, specifically designed for using on Gunpla. These are the simplest thing around. I've actually done a whole video on panel lining the easy way so long ago because this is the easy way. You just draw it into the line and then rub away the excess. You can even just use your finger. I do all the time. And what you end up with then is a perfect panel line. This works so well. Even if I put it side by side with the poor style, you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference in certain panel lines like this one right here. I will mention though, the one on the left is black, the one on the right is gray. However, I will mention that the brown is not color fast. This will actually spread over time, which can look pretty bad. And the gray isn't necessarily color fast either, and I feel it does fade over time. However, the black, the black is perfect in every way. Now these were designed for Gumpla. Let's test out what wasn't. So this is probably the most common household item I have here, which is your standard ballpoint pen. 
Now, first off, this ball rolls around a lot, so it's hard to stay inside the panel line. You feel like you're only kind of getting around the panel line, not in it. And in the end, it stains the plastic. It's messy and mucky. I did just grab a little bit of sandpaper to try and clean it up, but still, not good. But in the end, it did fill the line with the sandpaper. It could look worse. Hmm. Three out of ten. Next up then is the gel pen. Woo! The fat ball means that it will not get into that pen line whatsoever. The messy gel ink gets everywhere. Honestly, I don't even know who, you know, writes with these. But yeah, this is a no-go, absolutely. Gel pen, zero out of 10. Third on the chopping block then is some Artist Fine Liners. Now I have two different types of these, two different brands, two different thicknesses, a 0.1 and a 0.8. Honestly, I'm blown away by how well these worked, especially the 0.1. The 8 took a bit of trying to work it in. Obviously, it's too thick to fit into the panel line, but the 0.1 worked and worked well. So yeah, Artist Fine Liners, 9 out of 10. Well, that's if it doesn't like crack or destroy the plastic over time. So disclaimer, I'm not sure how this will treat plastic over time. But it looks nice right now. On to the next one. Next up, we've got the Sharpie Extra Fine Tip. Now I do have multiple colors of these, so I guess that is a little bit of an advantage to using these. These actually go into the line very, very easily. They're not as fine as I thought they'd be, but they're fine enough. Again, you do have the option of different colors if you're feeling artistic, but I will mention this will not just rub off. So you will need some kind of solvent in which to get these off. Unless you're super, super precise, but they're still a little too thick for that. In the end though, I got some nice lines. It is cool that you do have the option of colors. So when it comes to this Sharpie extra fine tip, eight out of 10, you will need a solvent, a bit messy. Also disclaimer, this is not for using on plastic, so it might end up screwing up your kits in future. However, Sharpie do have a oil-based paint marker, which can be used on plastic. I don't have one. Ah, next up, the unmistakable Sharpie. So yeah, don't do that. Zero out of 10. Up next, we've got the humble pencil. Now, at first this seemed like it was doing nothing, but you kind of have to make sure you work it in there. In the end, you do get a little bit of a line, which is better than nothing, but just barely. So that means I give the humble pencil a three out of 10. It won't harm your plastic, but uh, it might've been better if I used something, you know, a little softer than a 2H. Give it a go, won't hurt. So a little bit of an equipment update compared to the last time. This time we're using a mechanical pencil. Now we'll mention this is HB and 0.7 millimeters. So if you're gonna try this out, I recommend getting the softest, darkest lead you can in the smallest possible lead width that you can find. Now we'll mention there is the disadvantage that comes with pencils that usually comes with pencils. This can be a little messy, a little grubby and can get all over the place. So if you're doing this, you might want to, well, top coat your kit. But at that point, you could just go out and buy a panel liner. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But this will definitely not harm your kit and looks not too bad. I'll give it a 4.5, nah, a five out of 10. So the last thing we're gonna be taking a look at today is a random whiteboard marker. Now this, this was meant to be a joke. I just grabbed it off my to-do list and I thought it would definitely, it just would not work. And then it did. This went on real thick in a silly kind of way, like I thought it would. What I didn't expect is it wiped off perfectly everywhere but the panel line. Now, once again, I will mention, I do not know what this is based. As in, is it oil-based? Is it alcohol-based? I assume it's alcohol-based. Water-based, maybe? So I don't know, but this worked and gave me such a perfect pinstriped panel line that I was not expecting, leaving no mess at all. This is it beside the two Bandai pens, the pore style and the felt tip style, and it holds up against them really well. It can go into other areas, like the vents in the front, and wipe away, giving a nice fade. I'm shocked by this. If uh, you can find yourself 
a water-based whiteboard marker, it might just work. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. But I'm giving it a solid 9 out of 10. So have you ever tried panel lining your kits with something random? Did it work out? Did it not work out? Let us know down there in the comments. Give any special panel lining secret that nobody knows about and I know someone's going to say Tamiya panel line accent. I still need to get around to trying that sometime. But have you ever found something weird that just happens to work? Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gundam related videos and I'll see you next time. Once again, I cannot finish this video right here without thanking those who support me here on the channel as members and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Van Fon, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, Orgy59061, and Gumpla UK Limited.